Hey everybody and welcome to a second of, two, of three videos on this, the Bronica S2A. In this video we're going to talk about all of the buttons and features and how to use them. In the third video we're going to talk in detail about the different types of lenses for this camera. But the first thing we're going to do is talk about how to mount and unmount lenses. And as you saw in the first video, this has a two-part mounting system with a smaller bayonet for the lens and a larger bayonet here for the focusing helical. To re remove the lens, you want to extend it to maximum focus, and then there's a button right here that you're going to push in and turn the lens counter or anti-clockwise, and now we can remove it. We're going to set it off to the side while I get a different lens to put in. And then you grab your other lens that you want to put in. There's a red dot right here, and then there's a red dot right there. You just line those two up. Just line those two up, twist it clockwise, and it's in. Now we have the second bayonet for the focusing helical here. Here's the lens release button for that. It's on the camera body. Just twist it counter or anti-clockwise, and there you go. You can take that off. To re put a different lens back on, all we have to do is go out to our maximum or closest focus, push the lens release button, twist. Most of the lenses for this system are the small bayonet type like this, um, 55 millimeters, everything from the widest angle, which I think is a 40, up to at least the 100 millimeter Zenzanon, um, which is a spectacular lens, uses this smaller bayonet. The large bayonet are for things like the leaf shutter lens, here, some of the telephotos and things like that. And we'll see more of those in the third video as we talk about how the different lenses work. Next thing we're going to do is load and unload. Well, we're going to load and do, do stuff with film. If you have a C2, this is going to, you're not going to be able to take the back off your camera. If you have an S2 and an S2A, this is functionally the same. So what you want to do is open up the back, take out the, um, the film bit, the, the film carriage. This is already in the correct spot. You want to have your take-up spool up here where this gear is. This gear is the part that connects to your camera and advances the uh, film. You can see there's another gear right in here, I think, that, yeah, this is actually what connects to the camera physically, and then it turns this one. At any rate, we're going to take this roll of film that is for, expired 45 years ago and do the world a favor. So loading film in this is a bit counterintuitive. When you load it, you want to have the paper touching the pressure plate and the film facing away from the pressure plate, the, the emulsion side of it. So when you load it, it's the, the spool is going to go in this way. And you want to pull it out so that the black part of the paper is visible. Oh, that didn't sit seat correctly. There we go. And this should spin nice and smoothly, by the way, once you put it in. If it's not smooth, something's not right. Then you're going to pull this around, feed it into the take-up spool this way. This way, just like, come on, just like this. Come. There we go. You're going to tighten it up with your fingers there. Now there's a little red dot right here. Let's see if we can get that a little bit more visible. It's a little red dot right there. What you want to do is just spin this guy here, oh, and there's the arrows, until whatever, however those arrows are printed line up with that red dot. Now you're going to put it back in the back of your film, uh, film back, or if you have the C2, straight back into your camera. Close it up. Close that. If you have a little tag for your box, you fold it up and put it in there to remind you of what it is. Put the film back on. And then you just start advancing. Forever. That last bit that sounds like you've just broken it is completely normal, by the way. It, if you've never used one of these, the first time I used this, I really thought I broke my camera the first time I, I advanced the film. Now, you take out the film, film back, and you're ready to start taking photos. 
but we're not going to do that exactly. So what I want, what I want to show you is proof that this has been loaded correctly. And if this was a real kit, uh, real loading and you're really going to take photos, you would not want to open the film back until you had finished taking photos. But you can see here, if this were mounted on the camera, the emulsion would now be visible to the shutter. So we know that it's been loaded correctly that the black side does go out because I've just shown you that the emulsion is visible. All right, I'm going to have to actually physically mount this on here to put the dark slide back in if it'll let me, and it won't because this film back is smarter than I am. There we go. And watch as I push this in, you might be able to see that those little locking tabs there click back into place, which is the locking mechanism for how this works. Uh, we'll take this out and you can see what happens is even though we're at the first, there's this little bit of leader here. As this advances through the camera, it takes up the film that's pulled off of the source spool around the camera and here to the take up spool. And that's just how this goes for the next 12 frames. Ooh, this old film stinks. Now, once you've advanced the film all the way and you've taken your, your roll of film off of here and, and licked the tab shut to send it off to be developed, you'll, be, you'll have an empty spool right here. Just take that off, move it up here, and get it lined up. Sometimes it's easy. There we go. And you're ready to go to load your next roll a film right away or pop it back in the back of the camera just to wait for the next roll of film. And that's how the film is loaded and unloaded. And remember, film is one and done, so once you load it in here, don't open the back like I did. Just leave it in there, go through the entire roll, and then take it out. For changing the battery on these S2As, S2s, and C2s, well, guess what? No battery. There's no battery to change. There's no electronics. You never have to worry about a battery exploding in your camera. Uh, converse of that is there's no light meter built into the camera. So you either have to meter using your best judgment or guidance like the Sunny 16 rule or um, with a metering prism. I do not have a metering prism. If you've seen my review of this camera with all the sample photos, those were all taken just guessing at the... Um, best shutter speed. For your flash, your PC sync port is right here and you would just plug your flash right into this little port with the cable. There's no hot shoe on the camera. That's why I think this accessory that is in here contains a, a shoe. I don't think it's a hot shoe because there's no electronic contacts in here. You'd still have to run a cable to your camera. The camera can use bulbs and modern flashes. Um, bulbs really aren't made in any, of, in any significant quantity anymore. And modern flashers are what you can get brand new off the online or at any shop. So again, for modern flashes, if you saw the first video, any of the green numbers, bulb and X will work. So 1 15th of a second and slower, your X speed is 1 40th of a second. The exception to that, as, as I've noted, is that if you have a leaf shutter large format lens that has a PC port in it, this, because it's a leaf shutter, has a maximum shutter speed of 1 400th of a second. And leaf shutters can use a flash at any speed on the dial. So if you need a, flat, a faster sync speed than 1 15th, you can always get a large format lens, make an adapter for it. And now you've got a way to use your flash at relatively high speeds of up to 1 400th to 500th, depending on the specific lens you get. So in the viewfinder, we'll take a look through here and take a look at what we're seeing. The viewfinder pops up. This is your fine focus magnifier right there. The viewfinder, the framing lines in there are four by four and cover about 85% of the film. Then there's about a centimeter on each side giving you total almost 100% coverage um, 
uh, what you're going to see on here is almost the exact same size and coverage as what's going to be on the film. The focusing mat in here is the standard option. It's plain mat. I don't know if Bronica made other mats. I have to assume they did, but you can get custom made mats for this even today as I'm filming this in, in early 2019. Um, off eBay, there are still places that custom make focusing screens that you can use to replace this. And some of those will be brighter than the stock focusing screen, which is a little bit dim at the edges. There is no meter engage built into this, but like I mentioned, one of the prisms has a meter in it. However, um, everything I do is sunny 16 rule or shaded eight, uh, sunset eight, indoor four, 2.8, something like that. Depends on the indoor lighting. And those are good guides to get you a pretty good exposure with these without having to have a meter. So if you don't have a meter, uh, metering prism, which is a very heavy accessory that gets sips on the top like this, um, you can still use these cameras very effectively and take just fine photos with them. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put everything together and we're gonna see how to take a photo with this camera. We've got our film loaded. You want to open the viewfinder Use the magnifying glass to focus. Get your image in focus. Okay, great. Or before you do that, even better, is figure out what your aperture. Go with f5.6 and shutter speed. We'll go with 1 1 25th here. There we go. Will be now focus. And, it's, you know, pretend you have a film back on here. It's not going to let me take a picture with that film back. We're going to take our picture. It is, um, it is as subtle as a wrecking ball, the shutter speed on this. Then after you take your picture, you just crank the film advance to arm the shutter and you're ready to go. You can take another photo. What about double exposures? Okay, so for a double exposure, let's say again that a proper exposure is 1 1 25th of a second at f5.6. If you take two exposures onto the film, you're going to have a double, too much light. Your, your negative is going to be too dark and too thick. So what you want to do is compensate for that. You need half as much light going to your film. 1 2 50th is double the number of 1 1 25th, but it's also half the time. 1 2 50th of a second is half as long as 1 1 25th. So I'm going to leave it at f5.6. We're going to go to 1 2 50th, and that's going to be our shutter speed for our double exposure. Pretend that the film back is on because it needs to be off for the camera to work right now. We're going to take our first photo. So we just took the first photo. Now what you want to do is take the film back off. You have to have the, the cover in and push it in. So you take the film back off. Now you advance your shutter. Now you put your film back back on, take the dark slide out, and now you take your second exposure. Double exposures are very, very easy with this camera because the film advance is not linked to the um, shutter arming if the film back is removed. If the film back is on, there's no override. You're going to be advancing it whenever you arm the shutter. So the only way to do double exposures is to take the film back off. Which model S2A do I have here? It's true, right, that if I have an S2A, it has to have an S2A at the end of the serial number, right? And there's no S2A at the end of the, the camera body serial number. So it must just be an S2. Well, no, this is an S2A. One of the ways to tell is that thunk that you heard when I finished advancing the the advanced lever, that's something that only happens on the S2As. The first S2A bodies, the ones that were made from 69 to 72, did not have an S2A after the serial number. Those started roughly 100,000. So my serial number starts with 112, meaning this was about the 12,000th S2A off the production line. Uh, specifically, they start, I think the actual, they do actually start at CB 100,000. That, that was, according to Tony Hilton's book, The Number. And that, the S2As then continued to the end of that ser uh, serial number run. The later ones said S2A at the end. Also, the, the middle generation, the 69 to 72 S2As, had the S2 style strap lugs right here. 
but an S2A style film advance. Oh, and those ones with the S2A, the serial number started at about 150,000, although that's not true for the film backs because this film back starts at 136, is a 136 number. So at any rate, do you want to cheat S2A? Go up online, look for S2 bodies, and then check the serial number. If the S2 bodies, if someone has it listed as an S2, because there's no S2A, but it's above 100,000, it's actually an S2A. Especially if it has this style of film advance ha uh, knob handle dealy on the side. And that's what I did when I got this one. Um, it was pretty affordable because it was mislisted as an S2. So I can also confirm, since I've had to take this camera apart three times now, uh, that it is in fact an S2A. There are some maintenance issues to be aware of with S2 and S2A bodies, and you should be aware of these before you buy one. So let's take a few things apart here, and I'll show you some of the stuff I've had to do with this camera. Under here is a foam seal, and that foam seal degrades. It's, it's absolute garbage on all of these. I have actually two S2, it was S2A bodies, it's complete garbage on both of them. So I had to take the focusing screen out, clean out very thoroughly the, the, the foam seal, replaced it with cotton yarn and put it back down. One thing to be cautious of is that these two screws back here don't have to be removed and you can see possibly where I stripped the head off of one, not realizing that. Another major issue that these have is that the, the mirror had foam behind it, which is nonsense. There's no reason for that whatsoever. There was, you ha they had to have a standoff. They didn't have, they, they didn't have to use foam. It's a very thin strip of foam, but as it degrades, the mirror falls back onto the housing and that throws off infinity focus, even though it's like a, a fraction of a millimeter. So I had to take the whole mirror housing apart, which was much harder than it, ap it appears. Unscrew this, lift up that, this black part of it, which is hinged back there, pull out the mirror, clean off the back of it, clean the foam off of the, the base for the mirror, and then I replaced it with masking tape. Uh, I kind of estimated, I don't remember how many layers of masking tape I used, four or six, something like that, and then put the mirror back in. And even if it was just a layer too thick, the screen, the, the screws for the housing hold it in place. And the, the focus on this is, is spot on. So if you get one of these, just understand you're going to have to replace the foam underneath the focusing screen and, if, and you will want to then do a test with a, a roll of film that's not expensive. And then to do that, you just set your focus to the closest focus possible and focus on a few different things and then also do a test at a median focus and a test at infinity focus. And if your focus is off and also shoot wide open in as much as possible, whatever you're doing, shoot it at the largest aperture. If that focus is off after you've cleaned out the foam, then you know that there's an issue with the mirror and that that's gonna have to have the foam underneath it replaced. It, it took me about two hours to do this because I was figuring it out as I went, but if I'd known, all I had to do was undo these four screws on the mirror, one of which never made it back in. Um, lift it up, clean it, put down some masking tape, and I didn't do a whole bunch of trial and error with layers of masking tape. Um, it would have been a lot faster, but somewhere in the four to six layers of masking tape range, I think was just fine. And then I took thin little strips about, um, about the size of that Kodak label right there. So really small. And then just put them at each corner where the foam had been and it's worked great. Um, and I'm not worried about the masking tape ever degrading and having to be replaced. Okay, and that is it for the second of three videos on this Lebronica S2A. This is a fantastic camera more than amply capable for anything you want to do with it. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please leave them below. And I'm pretty good about responding to comments as well in a timely fashion. If you're an amateur photographer who has Bronica S2A photos you'd like to share, feel free to put a link in the comments section. Lastly, in, in the next video, We'll take a look at the lens mount. We'll talk in depth about the lens mount and some of the different mounting systems for the Bronica. And uh, I'll see you in the third video.